Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live with our beautiful blessed barn. So this is the trace, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Let me show you the model. This is what we are going by for inspiration. So, yay! Very shabby chic, very lovely. Farmhouse, country, all that wonderful stuff that's happening right now. All right, so here's the trace, and we used our awesome templates for this. So we've got our barn shape. Hello, Mr. Linda. <laughs> and then we have cute little roses, too. So I recommend using a pencil to begin with as a beginner. This gives you a lot of forgiveness. And then once you've got that in place, then you can come back in with a Sharpie to go ahead and firm that up. So that'll make it a lot easier for you so you do not lose your lines through the process of the painting. All right, now let's talk about our tools here a little bit. So we've got an awesome kit that we do with this. It comes with the canvas and the paint. Mine are all kind of messy right now, but <laughs> there's my paint. All right, and then brushes. So we've got a little brush set here. So we're all set, we're all ready to go, and I've got some water nearby, little rag, we're all good. Okay, so I'm gonna start by mixing up the background first. And then, uh, good, I'm glad, Roland, I'm glad you're there. Let me know if the music's too loud and you can't hear me. I think it's okay, I think I've got it set up okay, but y'all let me know. All right, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of this background color. And so I'm going to take a nice big dollop of the white first. And then just a teeny tiny touch of the gold, but just barely kind of touch into that. And then a teeny amount of the black. Yay, sweet. Okay. Yeah, I've been playing with my sound a little bit lately and I did have it all marked off, ready to go, and then I forgot about how you can adjust it on the keyboard, and then we changed that, and now it's all not right again, but, so I had to reset everything. So good. All right, so I've got this beautiful kind of taupe color mixed up. So I've got a lot of white here, and then I've got that little touch of gold, and then that little touch of the black. So that gray mixes with that golden color, just makes a really lovely cream color. And I might even come in with just little touches of the blue in there as well. That'll be a nice little hint happening throughout the background. Howdy! Welcome, welcome! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and spread this through the back. I've got a larger brush working in all this background color. And then as I work this in, I want to hold that brush more over to the side and just kind of crisscross it back and forth, kind of like making the letter X over and over and over again. All right, so we'll go ahead and push that through the background. All right, so this is going to be really pretty. I hope y'all are having a beautiful day out there. Lots of answered prayers. We need lots of answered prayers right now, don't we? <laughs> lots of peacefulness. We are going to get a lot of rain this week. So, that is awesome. We got some good letters today. <laughs> so I don't know what your mailbox had, but our mailbox had a letter with another stimulus check in it. Hand signed by Donald J. Trump saying, you get another $2,400. We were like, holy cow, <laughs> that's exciting. That was pretty awesome. So I'm not trying to brag because I think everybody has that same letter. So I think, <laughs> I think that went to all Americans. So that's awesome. Through the CARES Act. Whee! <laughs> I just historically marked this live video forever, but uh, I think none of us will be forgetting it just real soon, anytime soon. All right, so again, just pushing into this lovely background. This kind of process is super relaxing, which we all need right now, very therapeutic. 
So just really try to let that work for you as much as possible. Again, just lots of free flowing organic movements and lots of crisscross just back and forth. We have more people. Let's see, we've got Tracy, Betsy, Kathy, and Relinda's been here a while. I am so sorry if I can't see other people, but that's all I can see on the screen. But howdy, everybody. All right, so still working in all of our background. And the mix here again is a lot of white happening here, a little bit of gold, teeny tiny touch of black for that little bit of gray. And then every now and again, I push into a little bit of blue too. That gives me a nice hint of that blue running through the background. But I'm trying to keep my colors very neutral. So it has that kind of very nice whitewashed look happening. So when I do my cut in work, I will use the line edge of the brush to go ahead and cut in around that shape. And then we'll go ahead and work it in through the background. More people. Curtis Bramlett. Howdy. <laughs> and then Denise. Hi, y'all. What's up? Again, I apologize if I don't say hi to everybody. That's the only thing the screen is showing me right now. Hope y'all are doing great. It's a hot summer day in my studio. Woo! <laughs> it's just really, really hot in here. I may have turned the fan here in just a second. I feel like I'm in the tropics right now. <laughs> all right, still working on all that background. I know, me too. We'll be partying together soon with wine. <laughs> howdy, howdy. All right. So again, we have this kind of beautiful, very shabby chic whitewashed sky happening. Just a little hints of blue coming throughout the background. And then I'm gonna feather that out just a little bit. Try to take advantage of this background as much as you can for de-stress. It really helps a lot. Then I'm gonna go ahead and work in the solid ground cover a lot more gold happening here. So a lot more gold with our white. And then I'll just push this through in a horizontal stroke, just going all the way across. And then maybe a little touch of the black as well. We'll mix that in for a darker taupe color. And then push that through this brown work here. So again, just our color blocking still at this point, getting all this worked into the background. All right, sweet. Okay, so we've got our ground and our sky all done. Next up will be the barn. And I've got more blue tones coming in through this. So this is a darker mix, darker taupe with a little bit more interactive blue happening through the process. So what we're going to do now is I'm gonna come back in and remix some darker grays here off to the side. All right, so I took that little bit of black, mix it with the white. And that gives me my lovely gray off to the side here. Make sure I've got enough to work into 
I'll keep the gold to dip into just here and there for a little bit of added warmth, kind of spontaneously sort of added through there. And then lots of white nearby, and I've got my blue nearby. I will go ahead and do a little bit of a pre-mix with some blue and white off to the side. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and start to kind of push this in on the side of my brush. I'll we'll probably have to switch to a smaller brush pretty quickly because I'm running out of room here. So I'll switch over to Mama here in a second. But as much as I can, I try to stay with a larger brush for as much work as I can. So I'll do as much of the barn as I can with the bigger brush and then here in just a moment, I'll switch over to my Mama. I call this Big Daddy, this is Big Daddy. And then Mom will come up next. She'll help us out. holding the brush, whenever you do cut-in work, you want to hold it more like a pencil. This gives you a nice line edge. And then when you're working in the background, you want to go ahead and turn it over to the side just a little bit. And then that will help you do your background work in the barn. Now I'm going to be a little bit sloppy through this process. And just go ahead and cut all the way through. I've got my Sharpie work done first so that it will go ahead and bleed through the paint. So that's working for me. That's kind of a little cheat that I do. So it's very helpful and effective. And it allows me to have a very stress-free painting process. So I always encourage that for beginners. Try to do as much work as you can. Like first do it with a pencil, then do it with a Sharpie. And then wherever you have a line that absolutely has to stay, then you want that to be there in effect with your Sharpie so that it will bleed through the paint. So it's a really nice little cheat. So I'll sweep through here. And you can see already how, I'll bring it closer, but you can see how it's going to bleed through. So that's an awesome thing. So keeping it just nice, light, and gray, and I'll just push this all the way through here. even be a little bit sloppy around the rose because I know that the color I'll be using will definitely cover over the top. And then as I go, I want to go ahead and do little touches of different colors to go ahead and work into the process. So I've got a little tiny touch of white. Good morning! <laughs> yes, it is a great morning. So little touches of white through here. You can also do little tiny touches of the blue. Kind of push that through. That's very pretty. at home with me and let's say you did all this in pencil and you want to be sloppy and free like I'm being now which is awesome um, another option you can do if you just had your work done in pencil you can always let it set up and dry and just take all of your templates and just rework right back over the top and refirm up all those lines again over the top where you can see them so that is another option too 
All right, so now that I've got a lot of this work done here, then I can do a little bit of some texture work happening. So I'm going to touch in just little touches of color now. So I'll work in a little bit of this white here, maybe a little touch of the gold, and just lightly kind of dry brush it on the surface. And when I want more of this texture to come in on the top of the surface and just go ahead and stay there, I like to go ahead and hold the brush more over to the side. definitely vary the color of your own barn to kind of match whatever it is you like so oh okay so yeah sorry I asked for a little sound test at the beginning and um, we were playing with the music and somebody else said they could hear me okay and so now you can't Uh oh all right hold on I'll be right back I'm gonna turn it down just a second All right, let me know if that's better. <laughs> Sorry to disappear for just a second. Okay, that should be better. We've been playing a little bit with the music and... Also, I think some of the songs vary. They go up and down and so we'll get it. All right, so we've got our barn all covered up now. And then, and by the way, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> so, all right, awesome. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and work into our beautiful roses now. So let's do that next. All right, so we've got our mama brush now, and let's go ahead and work in some lovely pink. All right, so I am going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white, little tiny touch of the red, mix those two together. This will give me the base of my rose here. And then also, I did not put this out earlier, but I think I want to do a little bit of coral today. All right, hold on. I'm going to get a little bit of orange. Okay, so a little bit of orange with this too. Good morning. We'll put that in the mix too. And I wanna make sure I'm all dry in this little area. Pretty close. All right, good enough. So just color blocking at this point, getting nice solid color over the surface. So in the beginning, my roses will look a lot like little lumpy circles. So don't be scared by this, because we will definitely come back in over the top with lots of fun patterns, would really help. All right, there we go. And then let's do another little small rose here. here. Alright, so that is our color blocking first for the roses. So now what we need to do is we need to come in with lots of beautiful pattern that'll really be beautiful to come in over the top. So then I need to use my little bit brush. Get my water closer. Like that. Alright, so I want here's little bits. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push into a little bit of this white paint. My first layer will be white that will come in over the top. So I sweep this on in patterns that kind of look like half circles. And I'll push that around in a circular pattern that will come around this shape. And 
And as I'm doing this too and sweeping this on in half circles, I also try to lay the brush a little bit more on the side and do a light little drag with that. Okay, next step for the next one, little tiny rose here. You just kind of sweep that on, little half circles over the top. Kind of wiggle the hand a little bit too, gives it a nice kind of organic quality to it since we don't want anything to be too perfect. It actually helps to have a little bit of a shaky hand when you're doing this. And you're like, yay, finally, <laughs> shaky hand is my friend. It's awesome. All right, so little touches there. Then next up, I come back in with the dark shades for more of that depth. All right, so I will come in with my red next. That's a nice dark color. And then you know what? I wanna make sure, let's get some other fun colors here too. So get some purple and maybe a bit of some magenta. We'll see what that does too. That'll be kind of fun. So we'll start to work in that really pretty pattern. So pattern, depth, shadows, that's what's happening next. All right, so I will do a little bit of this really pretty kind of magenta color next. And just go ahead and do one little spot right in the center. And as I place it down, I kind of push and lightly drag out. <laughs> oh, well, so, I don't know if I can read all of it, but basically, um, what was I gonna say? Um, this video will stay up forever. <laughs> so you can come back and paint it anytime. All right, so we're gonna keep continue on just dragging little half circles throughout this process. And see how pretty that's becoming? It's really starting to take shape as a rose. Just magically transforms. And it's just light little strokes that make little half circles through here. All right, and I had that little tiny amount of purple nearby. Let's do a little spot in there of that purple. Just adds another little shadow. Just another layer of depth in there, really nice. So do the same thing in here, little spot. Little spot, and just a few little light strokes of that darker color coming in around the outside. Just kind of wiggle the brush a little bit and take it around in that little half circle. All right, beautiful, so we have lovely little roses now. Okay, now what we wanna do is work in some of our little cute leaves that come around the outside. All right, so now what we have, some of these colors. So I've got my little bit brush again, and I'm going to mix up some vibrant turquoise colors, also some sage colors. So I've got my green and my white, green and white. All right, now a little tiny touch of that black in there, very small amount, I actually picked up too much. I just barely touched into it. But a, a little bit of that black mixed in with the green and white, that'll make a really nice sage color. So that'll be nice and then I'll come into some turquoise here later. But I'm going to do a few little touches of my sage that will do little tiny leaves that come out from here. And this little leaf shape, let me show you closer. So the basic shape is it's, oh my goodness, Kim. Kim from Enid. Howdy. <laughs> All right, so my cute little leaf shape. So I do tiny little parentheses, tiny little parentheses, fill that in. There's my little baby leaves. Aren't they awesome? All right, so I'll go ahead and push some of these down 
around my little roses here. And I'll do some up here. All right, now I want to be a little bit more dramatic. I miss you too. And Michelle, you're on here now too. Howdy, y'all. Make sure I can see everybody. I can see Bailey. Hello, Bailey, Kim, Michelle. And after that, I can't see anybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it just scrolls up. I can't see anybody. But howdy, y'all. All right, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of some beautiful teal now. So I've got my blue and I've got my green. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and push into these green leaves. And I'm trying to say going more. You start to film a lot and you think, my goodness, you need to work on your enunciation. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> I say gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> I can hear my former English teacher in my head going, going, saying, would you say I am going to? <laughs> and if anybody else has an English teacher that still speaks to you in your brain, well, I do. I had a really mean English teacher one time too. And she would she would really get on to me about my penmanship, but I guess that paid off. So she she was actually someone that would she actually is a creator of fonts and would do specialty cards for Hallmark way back in the day. It was her special talent. And she actually pulled me aside later and said that she felt like I had real true promise. And that's why she was so hard on me and she felt like I really needed to work on my penmanship and I needed to be more serious about it. And she was not going to let it go. So she would actually yell at me a lot in class about my penmanship, so. Yes. So I guess God puts people in our life for a reason. He gave me a really mean English teacher <laughs> who made me have pretty handwriting. <laughs> and now, <laughs> you know, I actually use it for something. I'm sure there were a lot of people in the class that just said, I just want to be a doctor, okay? Like, I don't need to worry about what I write like. All right, so here we go. More turquoise. I'm sorry, what well, kind of turquoise? This is actually more of our, our uh, teal color. And so I'm gonna do light little drags here for the little stems. And then I will do tiny, cute little leaves here. All right, and then talking about my teachers, it made me think of my favorite teacher, who is Mrs. Grace. And I love Mrs. Grace. So, Mrs. Grace churned real butter in our class. And I've never forgotten that. And it is the best tasting butter in the whole wide world. And that is, that's a really, really good memory. All right. That's looking pretty swell. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so just close up here, a little bit closer. We're starting to get the details in of our beautiful roses. And I actually went in, I pushed in more colors this time to give it a more dramatic effect. A lot of times with my roses, I just do two colors. Well, I do like just white and a darker color over the top. And this time I actually pushed in white and magenta and purple and red. And I just had a lot more fun with those layers of details over the top. All right, so very nice. Okay, so next up, we have a lot of uh, like a dark charcoal gray to work in here. Let me see, so I need my little buddy brush. All right, so I will take my black and my white, mix that all together, and that'll make a nice dark charcoal gray. All right, there it is. 
is dark charcoal. And see, I still have that little peekaboo happening with my barn windows here. So I'm going to go ahead. Like how I said that, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> Getting better with my grammar. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to go ahead and push this through that shape. And just fill in kind of just rough little squares. I actually want these to be slightly imperfect. So, which is good. We want that. We, it's actually so much easier. So I just like for these little squares to be a little bit misshapen, a little rough, because these windows are super old and weathered, so we don't want too much precision happening. So I'm making my fun little dark spots here. And then I'll do the line work on the outside edge. So now I need to hold the brush more like a pencil to get a nice thin line edge. You can see the edge there. And if it's too thick with paint, you need to make sure and maybe possibly wash it out, dry it, reload, and then apply that firm pressure to the end to where you do have a nice thin line again to work with. And then I'll go ahead and just do little thin lines around the outside shapes here. And again, not too much perfection, just a nice light sketch of a line. I just realized I forgot my doors. Well, that's okay. It actually is a different color, so that's all right. All right, so we've got that first rough sketch there happening. And then, let me go ahead and work in. I've got like a soft, light blue happening on the bottom doors here. Oh, thank you. I miss you too. <laughs> yes, yes, I miss all of your beautiful faces. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and push this into the door shape. Light blue happening here. And now this side. All right, that's a nice start. Okay, and then come back in with that charcoal and then that line edge again, and just go ahead and line this out here. And just a light sketch of a line. Lots of fun lines. A lot of ruler work happened at the very beginning when I did the trace on this stuff. Definitely have that in place to make it a lot easier on you. All right, and then I do a fun little crisscross here. So I take one line as a diagonal down on both sides, just like that. And then I go the other way. So it's kind of like a fun little, that little, fun little X pattern happening there. And let's firm up this line here. All right, now what we need to do now are white highlights that come into the shape. So I will come back in with a clean little buddy brush and then some white. All right, little touch of white here. And we want 
just little highlights. So I take that brush and I actually just hold it like a pencil and do light sketches of white lines. So I'll take it through here. Again, imperfection is still our friend. So if you have a shaky hand on this, that is actually a good thing still. So that's awesome. good and then a little more little white sketch here all right and then through the windows we can do little white sketches through here and again these are nice old windows so we definitely want that imperfection working for us so just light sketches Nothing perfect. And through here too. All right, and then we have a little bit of that really fun window pane look to do, so I'll add that detail in as well. Check your brush, make sure uh, what happens is the brush gets filled up with paint, makes the bristles spread out. So you do wanna make sure you have a really nice thin line edge. So you wanna go ahead and take that brush, really apply some firm pressure to it as you reload and make sure that it stays consistently thin at the bottom. Yay! <laughs> I'll have to read the rest of that uh, later. Yes, I'm hearing from Ralph. My wife and daughter are the artists, and then it kind of trails off. I can't read it. I will read that later. What's funny, here's what I think. I can't read the whole thing, but what I think is really interesting is that when you start thinking about famous artists, it's always men that come to our minds. Most, most of the time. I mean, I think there's an, George O'Keefe, you know, but um, it is fascinating to me that at the painting classes, it's mostly women. So I don't know, I think that's really kind of interesting. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this light line all the way through and just light sketch of a line to make our little window pane. And again, watch that brush, make sure it's nice and thin. Nice thin line. But now that I'm painting live, I am noticing a lot more uh, men are joining in, so I'm super excited about that. That's awesome. Because painting is very therapeutic, and it's actually. Like I know, I do a lot of work um, with veterans. It's very relaxing and they really um, find a lot of healing. It's a good way to kind of calm their mind. So, it's a good point, isn't it? <laughs> okay, all right, so we've got our window details done now. I'm going to do the roof line of the barn, get some of those details worked in. And let's see here, I definitely still need a line edge brush for this. All right, so we've got our mama brush now, and I'm going to do a little mix of the black and the gold. So it kind of um, lightens up that black a little bit, but with a tiny amount of warmth too. And maybe just a little touch of white, let's lighten it up even more. So it's almost like a dark charcoal color, but again, black, gold, and maybe a tiny amount of the white. I'm gonna give some firm pressure to the brush. I wanna make sure I keep my line edge really thin. And then I've got all these really long lines. I wanna do as much of those uh, lines with the thin line edge of the brush. It really helps. So I will just hold it like a pencil and do that line edge all the way around that shape. And this is also a great place for a little bit of imperfection because in my model, um, let me just bring that in a little closer just real quick so you can see how rough it is. You see how kind of crazy? So 
so that's because that roof has seen a lot of weather. <laughs> it's got a lot of roof leaks probably. And so that is a nice, you know, opportunity for you to have just imperfection to sort of relax with. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the line edge here and here. Nice little fence line. So yeah, you can definitely be a little bit rough and loose with this process. Now I can't do all the outlining just yet because the brush is a little bit too big for all the little areas but I'll get, I'll get in as many lines as I can with this long line edge. All right, and then a little line through here. And I'll just go ahead and fill this in just a little bit. And I'll kind of do a little bit of a sketchy fill in, or at least some of that background behind. And then just a few sketches of line just come right next to it. For that old look happening here at the top. Now I have to switch to a smaller brush. What? <laughs> Christopher Lowe. But I have to call you Lowe. You're not in trouble. <laughs> you just, your whole name comes up. What's up, Lowe? <laughs> All right. That's like, don't say, Tiffany Michelle. Or I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's what my mom always used to say to me when I was in trouble. All right, so I have a smaller brush now and I will work in with this dark charcoal color. And take this all the way around this little corner here. And you wanna be, this is the one time in life where you actually want to be a bit sketchy. Normally that is a bad quality, but you want to be a bit sketchy in here, so you can do your little sketch marks, kind of play it loose and sketchy with the markings, not too precise. Again, this is an old barn, and so we want it to be a bit sketchy around the details. Show that weathered look. Now I have a little bit of fence line to work in. I'm just going to be a little bit loose with that too. So just kind of do a reference of lines that come through here. And then same thing on this side. And not a lot of perfection there either. We're about to pounce all over those with flowers anyway. So we just want that light reference over the top. And my brush has a little bit of dry brush with it. I've been using it so it's not, it, has, it doesn't have too much paint on it. So I'll come back in a little bit here over the top and then just kind of lightly dry brush in some of these 
extra roof line details. And then I'm going to add a few more looks of that weathered look over the top of the barn. So pushing it with another line edge here. I'm going to go ahead and work into this shape, kind of soften that up that I just did. and then pull out into the main area of the barn with a few little side sweeps there with that horizontal stroke and just kind of make these a little bit random in here. And the brush is getting a little bit dry. I'm actually going to try to optimize that a little bit and just continue on with a, just a few more strokes of just a little bit of that dry brush effect that comes in over the top. Let that work for me. Now I'm pulling in just light drags of some additional blue in here. Just creates a nice little accent. All right, it's looking pretty awesome. Okay, howdy. <laughs> All right, so now let's do some beautiful flowers over the top. And then also with your um, brushes, when you are not using them, uh, keep in mind, I've got a little bucket of water nearby, that acrylic paint does set up and dry pretty quickly. And so you do wanna make sure they rest in the water too when you're not using them. Okay, I need a little bit brush. We're going to do these beautiful little white flowers over the top here. And this is a really fun technique. So I'll take that little bit brush, lay it down into the white paint, just like that. And then I'll go ahead and lay it on the side and there's a petal. Let me show you that a little bit closer too. So I'll do this all the way around that shape. So you can see it's on the flat side of the brush and then I just apply it like that. And it makes this, wait, am I in the frame? Make sure you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, let me try that again. Make sure y'all can see. Isn't that, that cool? All right, so you just lay it right there on the flat side and just take that all the way around. Okay, now I gotta see what I'm doing because I'm getting all lopsided. <laughs> My pedals are like getting wonky. So hold on, I gotta see what I'm doing now. All right, but that's okay. Nature's pedals also get wonky, get blown by the wind or very imperfect. So I'm gonna take that all the way around in that little circle. All right. So I will lay on 
several of these. And I'm not doing my center just yet. I will come back in with another little fun trick and do the centers of my flowers. But for right now, I'm just playing with this same pattern and just laying several of these into the design. I'm going to do more in the space and on the other side, but before I move on, I want to show you the fun little trick here. So I take my handle of my brush and I go ahead and push down into the gold paint and I press right down in the center and that gives me a nice perfect circle every single time. I will do more of these. And I really, uh, oh shoot, I had an oopsie here, hold on. If this happens, water is an eraser, but you definitely wanna lay it flat so that it doesn't have a water run into your artwork. So I went ahead and took my water, let me show you what I did, and I erased it. And then you can take a little towel and you can just kind of wipe that right off. So there's another little fun trick out of a mistake. There are no mistakes, only possibilities. <laughs> That's what I was saying. All right, so Oops, you can't see it that way anymore. I'm <laughs> turn back the other way. All right, so as I'm working into this stage, I need to lift off. I need to get positioning underneath. So I'm going to go, I'm gonna go ahead and lift off the canvas off the edge here, and I'm going to go ahead and place this brush down. And I'll take it all the way around. And I'll put this back on the easel here in a second, but I want to make sure and get all this base work here done once I get a little higher up. You know, and over here, I think I want just a few more. Okay. All right, so we have a great foundation for those. Now I will come back in with the handle of the brush and then do the centers. All right, so again, nice big handle there, and then we will push into the gold. That makes that real cute little circle. I forgot why not there. Now the other thing that I like to work in here too is you can have, this is an optional thing, you can leave this just the way it is, just to kind of keep it simple. Or if you want a little bit of a grassy effect to it, I'll teach that this one on this one too. I didn't actually do this in the model, but I think it's a nice fun effect here. 
So I've got my little bit brush and a little bit of that gold and the white. I'll mix those two together. And then I'll pull up from the base and I'll just do light little grassy marks here that come up over the top. So you pull up from the base and then you lift off with a light hand. So I'll take this all the way across. So this is certainly an option on here. Just if you want like a little bit of a light grassy field in front or the effects of that. So I'm just doing a little bit of gold, a little bit of white. And then also adding just a teeny amount of black in there will add a little bit of shadow to that and give it a little bit of depth too. So that little bit of black just kind of blends in, makes like a soft gray color. So that is kind of a fun little option if you like a little bit more of that texture happening. Very subtle. Okay, let's see. I'm almost getting to the point where I'm pretty much done. Um, in the model, I've got a fun little design over here with the word blessed. Um, I'm going to show you how to do some fun clouds just in case, and then a little bit of lettering too. All right, so let's do some fun little clouds. This is a little bit different than what's in the model. But I'll take my mama brush and just push into the white. And we'll go ahead and push this out. I'll hold the brush just like I would hold a pencil coming towards paper, but in this case, canvas. That's how you wanna hold it. Feels very natural. And then just go ahead and push those bristles into little circles. And then that pressure will allow the bristles to fan out. And then you can go ahead and just fill into that. Then I take the brush and I hold it more over to the side parallel to the canvas. And then this allows me to have better coverage over the surface. And that also just kind of lightly feathers it out a little bit. A couple more of these. And then lightly feather that out. And let's do one more over here. And let me feather that out. All right, awesome. Now I want a little bit of highlight happening in the clouds. So I will take my little bit of brush and a little bit of gold and I will just lightly push this on to the outside. Now, it's definitely a bit um, strong in contrast at this point, but I will softly blend this. And then I can also push in a little bit of red too as an accent. And again, it looks really weird right now, but that's okay. I'm gonna fix this here in a minute. I'm just trying to get that initial color in, but I will come in for a soft blend. All right, so I don't let this sit too long or it will dry like this and that's not good. <laughs> so now what I wanna do is I want to come in with my little bit brush again, it's nice and clean, and I will work in just pure white. 
and I'll softly blend over the top. So I just go right back over it with white. And then that just softly blends into it. So it leaves some of that color just kind of strong right around the edge, but then it softly blends into the middle and gives you a, a nice light transition between that dark highlight and then the softness that blends into the center of the cloud. And then you can just kind of lightly feather the brush out back and forth. And then sometimes coming in with a bigger brush too, I think helps. So I'm going to use my mama now, and here she is. This is mama. See how she's a lot bigger. And then I'll go ahead and do that light overlay. It's really pretty with the pink. You can see how that gives a nice accent to the cloud. and then lightly feather that in. looking lovely soft blend happening now feather that out this gave some nice free accents to our clouds all right so we have beautiful clouds now okay so now what I will do is a little bit of lettering now ideally if you're working at home you want everything to completely set up and dry so that you can do your penciling first and if it doesn't quite work out and fit, you have the ability to erase and rework as needed. So because I am under some different time constraints than you are and filming live, I wanna go ahead and just work mine on, but it's okay. As I say, I am professional, <laughs> I can do this, okay. So what I will do, hopefully, now that I said that, try to put the fall. Uh, so hopefully what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and write on my word. And I know it, you know, I'll plan with my pencil so that it fits into the space here. Okay, so you can do bless, joy, there's just all kinds of different options. Um, I'm going to make this my fun little joy farm. So we'll just, you know, plan, you know just keep it simple. So I'll do that. Ta-da! Yay, it worked! All right, so I will go ahead and paint over the top. And another option for you, too, at home, if you want to also just use a Sharpie, is also a beautiful thing to do over the top with lettering. And you can do any word that inspires you. And I did have a little bit of the dry brush happening, but that's okay. I kind of like that look. All right, so I think we are done. I don't think I've forgotten anything. But yeah, we have a beautiful barn with some clouds in the sky and some flowers in their flourishing field. So that's awesome. All right, cool. All right, so I think we are done. So you may or may not see me later. I'm not sure. I like to pop on here occasionally and do different shows spontaneously. But the next time you will for sure see me is Thursday. We have another show. And I think it might be Baby Yoda. It's either Boho Horse or Baby Yoda. But I'm doing, I'm doing shows Thursday, Friday, both days. So check that out on Facebook events. Yeah, it'll be exciting. I don't know if we have any Baby Yoda fans out there, but 
Uh, but definitely the horse is one of my most favorite paintings that I've ever done. I absolutely love it. So we're definitely doing that towards the end of the week and then I did a lot more. But definitely my schedule is for sure always Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And you can find all the supplies that you need on Facebook. And we just love spending time with y'all. So y'all have a wonderful rest of the day and we will see you soon.